Have you ever wondered if buying a used car could be more cost-effective than a new one? In the vast marketplace of automobiles, the debate between new and used cars is as old as the industry itself. On one hand, the allure of a shiny, untouched vehicle with the latest features and that fresh car smell is undeniably appealing. We often perceive new cars as superior, attributing their high price tags to better quality and longevity. However, let's take a moment to dissect this perception. If we scratch beneath the surface, we find that this shiny new car comes with a hefty price and not just in terms of upfront cost. The moment you drive a new car off the lot, it suffers an immediate depreciation. In fact, a new car loses about 20 to 30 percent of its value within the first year alone. That's a significant chunk of your hard-earned money vanishing into thin air. On the other hand, let's consider used cars. They might not have that new car smell, but they do offer a compelling value proposition. A used car has already borne the brunt of depreciation. This means by the time it reaches you, its rate of depreciation is significantly less than that of a new car. And here's the kicker. The initial cost difference between a new and a used car could be substantial. This isn't just about the sticker price. There are other costs to consider too. Insurance, registration and taxes are often higher for new cars. So here's a thought. What if, instead of sinking your money into a rapidly depreciating new car, you purchased a quality used car for less and invested the remaining amount in appreciating assets? You could potentially come out ahead in the long run, financially speaking. This perspective challenges the traditional mindset of car ownership and opens up a world of possibilities. So what if we took a different approach to car buying? Let's explore that. Or imagine John, a regular guy with a regular job. John needs a car but doesn't want to break the bank. He's not looking for a shiny new ride to impress the neighbors. He's looking for something reliable, something that gets him from point A to point B without any fuss. John knows the value of a dollar. He's not about to throw it away on a car that's going to lose half its value the moment it leaves the lot. John does his research. He checks out used car lots. He scours the internet. He's looking for a car that's been well taken care of, one with low mileage and a reasonable price. He's not just buying a car. He's making an investment, an investment in his future, in his financial stability. John made his choice, but what did he do with the money he saved? With the money saved from not buying a new car, John decided to invest. Now let's take a closer look at how John navigated through the labyrinth of investment options. John was no financial wizard, but he knew the basics. He understood that he had a smorgasbord of investment options to choose from. He could have stashed his cash in a savings account, but the interest rates were peanuts. He could have opted for bonds, but they were a slow burn. He could have even considered commodities, but they were a little too volatile for his taste. But then there were the appreciating assets, stocks, and real estate. The allure of these assets is their potential to grow in value over time. They were the thoroughbreds in the race, the ones that could potentially take him to the finish line faster. So first, let's talk about stocks. Stocks are essentially a piece of a company that you can own. When the company does well, the value of your stock goes up. It's like being on a roller coaster ride, but with the potential for financial gain at the end. John knew that investing in stocks was not without risks, but he also knew that with higher risks come higher rewards. Then there was real estate. Buying a property and then either selling it for a profit or renting it out for a steady stream of income was an enticing proposition. Real estate was tangible, something that John could see and touch. It was like buying a piece of the earth, and John liked the sound of that. So, after weighing his options, John decided to split his investment. He would put half of his money into a diversified portfolio of stocks and the other half into real estate. John's investment choice was a smart one. But how did it turn out? Well, we'll find out what happens next. Fast forward a few years, and John's investment has grown significantly. He took the road less traveled, and it has made all the difference. While his friends were still paying off their auto loans, John had a reliable car and a growing investment portfolio. Let's dive into the numbers a bit. John's used car, which he bought for a fraction of the cost of a new one, is still running smoothly. This alone has saved him thousands in loan payments and interest. But let's not forget about his investment. Remember, John invested the money he saved from not buying a new car. This investment has been quietly compounding over the years. Despite the normal ups and downs of the market, his investment has grown at an average annual rate of 7%. Now if you do the math, you'll see that the value of John's investment has surpassed the value of a new car. 
And remember, this is all from the money he saved from buying a used car. Now let's compare this to a new car. A new car, while shiny and exciting, starts losing its value the moment it rolls off the lot. It's a depreciating asset. After a few years, the value of a new car can drop by as much as half. So, while John's investment was growing, the value of a new car was steadily decreasing. It's clear to see that John's decision to buy a used car and invest the savings was a smart one. He has a reliable car, an investment that's grown significantly, and no auto loan to worry about. He's financially ahead of his peers who chose to buy new cars. Now this is not to say that buying a new car is always a bad decision. There are circumstances where it makes sense. But in terms of pure financial logic, John's decision to buy used and invest the difference was a winning strategy. John made a wise decision by investing his savings, but what can we learn from his story? John's story teaches us several key points about the cost-effectiveness of buying a used car and investing the rest. Firstly, let's talk about new cars. They're shiny, they smell great, and they come with the latest tech. But here's the kicker. The moment you drive that new car off the lot, it loses a significant portion of its value. That's immediate depreciation, and it's a costly fact of life with new cars. That's money you'll never see again, money that could have been put to better use. On the other hand, a quality used car, one that's low in cost yet reliable, does not suffer from this immediate depreciation, it's already taken that hit. What you pay for is what you get, and often you can get a great car for a fraction of the cost of a new one. This means savings, and who doesn't like to save money? But we're not just talking about saving money, we're talking about making money, that's where the investment part of John's story comes in. By buying a used car and investing the rest of the money that would have gone into a new car, John was able to put his money into appreciating assets. What are appreciating assets? They're things that increase in value over time, like stocks, bonds, or real estate. Unlike a new car, which is a depreciating asset, these appreciating assets have the potential to grow your wealth. This is not just cost-effective, it's smart. So, what's the big takeaway here? Well, it's this. A quality used car can be just as good as a new one, and it can save you a lot of money. But more than that, it can also offer you a unique opportunity to invest in your future. Next time you're in the market for a car, remember John's story. You might find that a used car is not only a cost-effective choice, but also a smart investment opportunity. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and comment. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to keep up with the latest content.